guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited. Today is my Christmas family pajama video. I've been waiting for this day to come. And as you can see, I'm wearing the final product. Let me step back and show you. How cute are these? This is a super easy and comfortable design, which is why I opted to go for it because I needed something to smash out super quickly. Um, I was considering a harsher like suit style kind of like top, um, but it would have taken me forever to do four of those in the time frame that I had. And it just so happened. <laughs> it's like the universe just knew that I had plans to make Christmas pajamas because Cricut reached out to me to collaborate. And what a fantastic opportunity to have been given to work with such an iconic brand. Um, so as you can see in the background, my Cricut Maker 3 is here. A huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. And that is what I used to make these pajamas. How cool is that? You can do a wide variety of activities on your Cricut Maker 3. It is literally the magic machine. <laughs> it goes anywhere from stickers to press-ons to iron-ons. Like you have so many opportunities. It's literally endless. It cuts wood, fabric, vinyl. In fact, the Cricut Maker can actually cut up to 300 materials with such precision. The blades are insane. There is also a variety of options when it comes to the design. So I was really stumped on what design I wanted to go for with our t-shirts. Part of me wanted to go Disney, part of me wanted to just do something basic like a Christmas tree, but then I kind of wanted a quote as well. So I ended up landing on my own design. I bought these t-shirts just plain from Best and Less for all of the sizes. You could literally pick up a t-shirt from anywhere, any color, and then design onto that. I spent hours, you guys, looking on the internet trying to find myself some Christmas pajamas this year, but everywhere was either sold out in a medium man, medium to large depending he could squeeze into either or a 3x 2x woman's like there was no matching family pajamas that had both of those sizes included and not only that but there's a, a lot less options when you are a plus size woman so having the cricket is literally a game changer. I'm never going to have to worry about going to a shop and buying matching family pajamas ever again. I can build them all myself. Okay, so getting into this project, we're going to be opening up our Cricut design space. It's compatible with iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, which is awesome. So first you're going to download the Cricut app in your downloads, add that to your applications, and then you can open up the Cricut design space. We're on our home page and then we're going to go down to a new project. As you will see, we've got a grid here and this is in inches currently. So when we're in hundred percent, every square is an inch by inch. On the left panel here, you can see we've got templates, projects, images, text, shapes, and uploads. If it's not already in here, which a lot of the time it won't be, you're going to press upload image or upload pattern, and that will then put it into this gallery here. Now I already have what I need, so we're going to pop these two onto the um, grid. Sorry if I can get my words right. Lovely. So as you can see, that's currently 2.8 inches, and we definitely don't want it to be that size. So we're just gonna reduce that down so I've only got two designs that I'm importing myself. The rest of this is either text and I've got two images that are free. So if we go into images, you've got so many free designs in here to choose from, shapes, calendars, lots and lots and lots of designs, but I'm just gonna be going into my saved and then we're going to pop this one onto the canvas. Now I flipped both of these because I wanted them to be that way around. And we're gonna put the ish there, flip this around too. I want it to look like the elf is spray painting ish onto the design. His arm here, currently looks like obviously that he's holding his hip 
I don't want that. I want him to look like he's holding the can, but I'm not going to be able to draw a hand or an arm. So what we do in design space to eliminate an element is, unfortunately, there's no like delete button per se, but there is a slice. So if we go to shapes, grab a square, twist this around, cover over all the bits that you don't want him to have. Then we're going to highlight these two together and go slice. Now this is going to remove that from that. Now we don't need to worry about these two things. So we'll just highlight them, press delete. And then we've got his arm here. So I'm going to rotate this actually and reuse it. Give it a flip as well so that it looks like his arm is coming off and up. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I just now need to group these together so that they move as one. Actually, I'll weld it. Let's weld, yeah. Um, and then we're going to move that over here. So as you can see, it'll sit behind the can. And just pull him down below the can. And then that looks like he's holding the can. So we've now got that, we've got that. We need to put him a little bit there and then we're gonna write our text. I can't remember if I did capitals or not. <laughs> did I do capitals? No. Now we want it to look like three lines like that. So we want to make sure that the size is right. So we're going to group all of these together just temporarily, press group. And as you can see, this is 8.92 inches. So depending on the size of shirt that you're going to be making, you're going to want to obviously measure your t-shirt to see the exact measurements that you'd like the logo to end up being. We're currently sitting just at nine inches with this design and I'm wanting to get it down to seven inches. So the way to do that, because if I was just to move an element, it would just move that particular one. And that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to grab and drag across all of the elements. So as you can see, it's highlighting all of these um, elements on the side and we're going to press group. Now that's going to move it as a group as the name suggests. So I'm going to put that in the corner on the left side and drag this down to seven inches. Once you're happy with the size, you can just bring it back out. I find it easier to work in a central point. And then we're going to ungroup all of them. Now this is something that's not necessary per se. You could go and print it as is, but I personally like to group it together as the colors. That way I can ma maximize my sheets of vinyl or iron on whatever I'm going to be using. We're going to color coordinate each um, mat. So we've got the elf and the Santa that are the same color. So I'm going to put those relatively close together. You've got to remember that you're going to be weeding this and you don't want it to overlap too closely. And then we've got the ish and the spray can, which is going to be the glitter red. And then we've got the blue um, word. I'm just going to change this so that you can see. So we're going to change that to blue, change the ish to a dark red. And this one to a dark red. And then we've got the elf to a light red. So that's going to be my three mats that print and group these together as well. So as you can see, we've now got a group here, a group here, 
and text. And now we're ready to get cutting, which is very exciting. So we're gonna go make it. That is how simple this is, you guys. With the Cricut Smart Iron-On, you have the choice to go without a mat in the machine or on the mat. So we're gonna go for Cricut Smart Materials only for this instance, because it is a smart material. And as you can see on the left side here, we've got our three elements. So we've, or three mats, I should say. So this is where you're gonna see the benefits of me grouping this color together. If we had have left the design the way that it was, Santa would have been here and the elf would have been here and all of this space in the middle would have been wasted material. Now you can see up on the top left, you've got project copies. Now, if you're going to be doing multiple sizes that are the same, you can hit two here. So if you press apply to that, you will see that it's going to duplicate this design and you're gonna to have to press mirror on it. How cool is that? Next up, we're going to be going continue. And this is where the fun begins. We're gonna plug in our machine and make sure that the cord is into my laptop. I'm going to be using the weeding tool from the essential tool set from Cricut and this is such a handy little hook. Once you have weeded the entire amount of iron on that you've got then you're ready to start printing which is very exciting. Using the Cricut easy press mat we're going to be ironing the shirt to start with and of course we're also going to be using our Cricut easy press machine. This machine is going to make my project so much easier and quicker. It is a huge base which is going to be able to cover so much more space put on so many more design elements and it's really fast as well. It has a timer built into it. It's also got a heat adjustment and it also comes with a base foot that you can sit it on once it's hot so that it's obviously not going to burn anything. <laughs> So for the adults t-shirts, for me, a good width was sitting around that 11 inches. The best part about the Cricut is that I can cut fabric with this. The machine automatically comes with a fine point blade and we're using a rotary blade. Um, so you are going to have to switch that out into the machine. The Cricut is going to be best utilized for small intricate cuts that are just an absolute pain to cut out with your hand. So for mine and Elliot's shorts being such a big design and template, I ended up cutting those out by hand because it was definitely easier and also the mat wasn't quite large enough for our booties. Once you've got your template set up, it's going to be such a quick process to just hit, yep, use that one or use that design and then you just switch out whatever material it is that you want. Now you are gonna need a mat for the fabric. So the mats that Cricut have are sticky and it applies straight to the mat. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how I uploaded my template to print out in the machine. So it is super simple to get your template to print out. You could use your own pattern or you could make a pattern or you could upload a sewing pattern that you've bought. And you do that by pressing new project, but I'm gonna be taking you into a project that I have already created. So this is short size four and this is short size five. Now the only difference is the width of these and a little bit of height. So we're gonna go in here and press make it. You could edit the project details. If this is the shorts size four. You obviously wanna double check the measurements. Again, I'm in inches um, to what size in real life your pattern is just to double check that it is the right size. And of course, there is no warning symbol coming up that it is too large for the mat. So we're ready to make it. Again, we're going to need to select on mat. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on how I 
uploaded this PNG or created my own pattern on Cricut, let me know and I can maybe make another video or an in-depth video on this. So we're going to be using the longer mat, which is 24 inches long. This is the strong grip purple mat from Cricut. And we want to obviously make sure that we have mirror turned off. You would want to turn this on if you have a patterned print or if it's a one-sided fabric. But in my case, it didn't matter which side was printed on, so I didn't need to mirror that. So here we're going to choose our material. So for the iron-on, we were using our smart iron-on. But for this instance, we're going to be using fabric cotton. Now I've saved these as favorites. There is also a tab here for popular, or you can um, browse all of the materials over here. And like I said, there is so many to choose from. So we're gonna select cotton and it's going to set a default pressure. It says load tools and materials. And for this one, we need the rotary blade. So once you've got all of those four pattern pieces cut out, we're going to be doing the second set. Now I'm going to increase the size ever so slightly on this pair. And again, I'm going to follow the same steps that I just showed you and cut all of those four pieces out as well. Now, moving on to Elliot and mine, I'm going to be cutting out mine and his by hand. I grabbed a pair of shorts that we both love and fit us really well. I'm not going to be doing pockets or front like zipper parts at all, just because I want a super basic, simple design. So I'm gonna be doing this in quadrants just like I did for the boys' pants. So I'm gonna be measuring the bottom seam to seam from inside to out, and I'm gonna be doing the same at the top, and then the length. And I'm gonna be creating my own pattern, same as I did for the boys a few weeks ago, and putting that onto four quadrants of paper, stucky tape together, stucky tape, sticky tape together. And then I just cut this pattern out of the paper Paper, allowing three centimeters either side. Now I wanted to leave three and not two just in case my measurements were slightly off. I can always alter it in. I cannot add more fabric. Once this was cut out, I then proceeded to cut out the fabric. So I placed my pattern over top of the fabric I then pinned together all of the pairs of the shorts down the side leg seams. So we're gonna end up with two panels for each set of shorts. I then sewed a line straight down that side using a zigzag stitch. This was to hopefully prevent any ripping or tearing of the material. Once the sideline was done, I worked on the bottom hem of each of the shorts. So I used my heat press mat, which came in super handy. Um, and I also used an iron just for convenience of it being smaller um, to press over each of the hems. So I did a small little lip and then I did a larger lip. And it was really easy having the grid lines on the fabric to actually follow to trace, which was really helpful to keep me in a straight line. Once that was done, I pinned that in place and sewed along this line as well. And of course, repeated the same process for all four shorts. Once that was done, I decided to next tackle the inner leg of each of the pants. So I just sewed a little line along that inner, thigh, butt, wherever you want to call it, part of the pants. So I did that on all of the pieces again. So now it's time to bring the shorts together. So we're gonna put right sides facing one another and we're going to seam along those front and back edges. Please forgive me if my lingo is not right. As I said, I am still learning to sew myself. So I'm trying my very best to use the knowledge that I know, um, but just, just bear that in mind when you're following along. <laughs> At the top, we obviously left quite a fair bit of fabric to allow that turnover over some elasticated waistband. So I started off by just doing a centimeter turnover just to get that raw hem covered. And then we're going to grab our elastic um, waistband material and place that on the fabric to see what width we're going to need to cover over. 
Once that's done, remove the elastic away and we're going to pin this in place. Once this has been pinned, find what side you'd like the front of your pants to be and place a waterline mark either side of that front stitch. This is where we're going to be placing the elastic through and also any cord or um, ribbon that you would like to place. Now using my heavy duty singer machine, it actually has a buttonhole attachment. So I place this on and it does all the work for me. So I just push in the little arm and all I have to do, do is use the foot pedal and it automatically decides when it's going to turn and stitch that buttonhole in place for me. So once all those buttonholes have been sewed into place, we're going to cut open that hole with a seam ripper. You're going to refold that back down to the ironed line and then you're going to repin it in place and sew along that pin line. We now have a fully seamed pair of shorts and the last couple of steps is to add in the elas elasticated band and also the ribbon. Just going to add a little stitch. I do two lines of stitching on this. The very last step is going to be the ribbon or rope, whatever you would like to use. I again measured what length I wanted that to hang. Add your knots either side of that and thread that through the same as you did with the pin. This is a very time consuming job, but it's worth it in the end. And guys, that is it. That is how simple this project has been. The only time consuming thing was repeating it by four. I'm so stoked with the outcome. I'm so excited for you guys to see. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's little tutorial. I am by no means a professional sewer nor a professional crafter, but let me tell you, Cricut made this process so much easier. I would hands down recommend this as a Christmas gift or just a gift to yourself for the new year to get yourself craftier in 2022. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please go down and hit the thumbs up. As always, it supports my channel. Thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring today's video and to you guys for watching my content. As always, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are of my finished result. And with that being said, let's show you the finished result.